However, he has some big numbers. He has a high single of 206 and a high triple of 466. And again, that sizzling five string roll off of 706. He had left for our unsighted friends. He had left the uh, three, six and 10 and the seven and he picked off the three on the right and now he's just taken down the seven for a 10. Leaving three, five, and ten. And he has a spare. Don Richmond has won five consecutive matches just before our championship. This past August 25th, beating Paul Burt, Fran Honorado, Mike Sargent, Mickey Carley, and Dean Pierce. Don has a league average of 122. His high single just missed a 200. He had a 199. However, he has a high triple of over 500, a 510. He had a 676 back when he needed to win the roll off. And he makes a spare to begin, picking off the two and four, which were the only two pins standing with a piece of wood. Don is married, has one son. He's employed by Polaroid of Norwood as an electronic technician, representing the Wright Brothers Sports Center of Holbrook. He has seven. The 10 pin did not go down. Four and seven over on the left and the 10 pin still standing and three pieces of wood. One about where two would be, another where number one would be and the other down about where six would be. He just missed the piece of wood that was near where number one would be. Went down and got the 10 pin, but what he wanted to do was hit that piece of wood, as I said, that was near where the head pin would be. However, it's a 10. A fill of seven and a 10, and now we'll find out what our challenger, Phil Clough, gets on his spare. Here's the fill, and he gets, he gets eight. And he's left with the seven and eight side by side and one, two, three, four pieces of wood side and all off towards the right. However, he has to bring it from right to left to bring it. Nope, didn't work. What he was trying to do, didn't get anything. But again, didn't get anything. So it's an eight. Now Phil has <coughs> nine and 10 side by side. Phil is married, father of three. He is a designer. Now he has wood. Well, let's see what it's going to do. One piece is uh, just about up against the nine the other uh, uh, on an angle but he got it now Don Richmond our defending champion Big hit, two pins standing. They are the three and the five. We can mark that one. Seven.
Two pins on the right are the three and the six. All alone on the left, the four pin. Wood to the right of three and six. He moved it, but of course the six and the four are on a parallel plane, so it's tough. A nine box. So after four boxes in the first string, as we take our first check on the scoreboard, with a bonus ball still to be thrown by Phil Clough, the scorer is Richmond 53 and Clough 46. Working on a spear, our challenger, Phil Clough. Two full on the head pin, and he got four. It's not quite a spread eagle. He has the spread eagle to one side, and that's just gone. The other configuration is a side saddle triangle made up of the th three, six, and nine. Nine still there. Big hit, and a, it turns out to be a delayed strike as the six pin eventually toppled. Don Richmond. And the defending champion leaves side by side pins on the parallel plane, four and five, and no wood. That's the five. That's the four. Like it might be a strike. He winds up with the six and ten still there. It's a spare. Now Phil Clough working on a strike. Two bonus balls to fire. First one got him seven. No wood to help. He's got two and four and six. Again, those rather difficult par parallel pins. That was the reverse of what Don Richmond had. In other words, John had the um, three, six, four, and he had the two, four, six. Ten. This time he only has one to worry about, the seven. Phil made his first appearance on our show in September of 83. This is his eighth. Mark it. Now Don Richmond, our defending champion, comes up working on that spare you see in the sixth. Al Gilio keeping score on that electronic scoreboard and on the big board today for the folks here, we have Bruce Goldman. Half Worcester left side. And with his beautiful Argyle socks, it's arterially resplendent, Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee. Almost pulled it off, got everything but the five pin. It's a nine. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Phil Rubin is our producer director. Don Richmond leaves, well, he didn't leave. It, was, it looked like it was going to be five, eight, and nine, but now that 
object pin has just toppled, so he's left with the side-by-side -side eight and nine. One piece of wood on an angle to pointing toward the nine pin, another one across the front of the eight. He tried to use the wood, hoping it would bang off the sidewall and come spinning back. It did not. Our crew today, Skip Peabody, Joe Sukar, Chris O'Hare, Dick Erickson, and in post-production videotape, Doug DeWitt. Now Phil Clough comes up, working on a spare in the eighth. Here's the bonus. He got uh, six, leaving one, three, seven, ten. One piece of wood beside the three, two behind it. And that took care of the right side, but nothing went flying over to get the seven. It's a 10. 114, as I said, his league average is 115. He has a box to go. A little bit thin on the right side, leaving four horsemen left side and the tough pin to get the nine pin. One, two, four, seven, and nine. No wood. Boy, nice effort. He got the four horsemen and got a piece of wood to roll right across in front of nine, but not close enough to knock it down. He picks it off for a 10 and a 124 opening string. Now Don Richmond obviously would need a mark if he's to win this first string. And he probably will get it. The only pin standing is the nine. It's got wood around it, which at this moment does not look as if it will be a roadblock. It looks as if it's close enough to it so that if he just hits the front piece of wood, it'll go. Yes, it did. Did not get a big fill. Just four. He's got the four horsemen on the right side, but he also has the five and nine. And, and the nine is still there. So Phil Clough picks up the first bonus money. That's fifty dollars for winning the first string. Just a question now what the final total will be for Don Richmond. All around that single pin and it never did go. Score at the end of one and uh, uh, the, with the only bonus money of $50, our challenger Phil Clough over Don Richmond. Don Richmond fires and got a strike. Slow motion. The ninth pin toppled and then the tenth. Nine on the first one and as you could probably tell by the gallery here, they're all saying over, over, over and then wrong way. Well, it did topple, but not the way they wanted to see it go. So he has begun the middle string with strike followed by spare. Phil Clough. Everything down except the four horsemen left side. One, two, four, seven. Two pieces of wood in back. You could tell even if you couldn't see that it didn't all go. The seven stayed up. It's gone for a 10.
three, seven, and nine, or seven alone, and then three with nine behind it, and some wood. He made it. Nice shot. Use the wood. All right, let's see if we can get three marks in a row here. Three marks in a row, as you know, any combination strikes or spares in the same string earns the bowler a $50 bonus. He's got one pin to pick up. He has a nine pin drop and the one pin up is the 10 and in front of it he has favorable wood. If he hits it properly, that is. He did. So $50 in bonus money right now for Don Richmond. And he has picked up a lot of bonus money in his previous appearances in this streak of his. Another big fill, nine. And he has the five pin to pick up for $50 more because now that that bonus has been established three in a row, each consecutive mark is worth 50 as long as he can keep it going. He did. So he has uh, begun the third, or I mean the middle string, with four marks in a row. Now Phil Clough, today's challenger. Four horsemen left side in the back, the eight pin, wood in between the two and four. Will it go? Again, he leaves the seven pin. The hit was just a wee bit too thin. Didn't scatter them quite enough. Our high-low jackpot at the end of the program will be worth $600. Winner will get first try at it. Then the runner-up, if neither hits it, we add $25 to do that every week until somebody hits. The largest amount we've ever had in the high-low jackpot was $1,875. That was hit by John Zernike. Peter Flynn had the second biggest total, $1,525. Andy Foss, $1,325. And Phil Clough has picked up the seven pin to make it a 10 box. Real thin hit that time was kind of strange. It came in, looked so it was going to be good. Threw a couple of pins up in the air, knocked down five total, but they're scattered all over the place. He's got four seven. Then he has three nine. Then he has the ten. He pulled off three nine ten. Four seven still there. It's a 10 box. And again, we take a look at the scoreboard after four boxes of the mix already on the board in this string, Don Richmond coming up. And our defending champion fires. And he's got a strike on top of the spear. Five consecutive marks. that baby grilled he has two strikes in a row and you know what three strikes in a row will do don't you in case you don't one quick reminder an extra bonus of a thousand dollars we'll have to wait and see what happens on that now here's Phil Clough and Phil leaves a single pin the four oh he couldn't have missed that by more than a quarter of an inch. Oh, that was so close. Big, big hit for Phil Clough. He gets everything except the kingpin, the five, and he has a piece of wood right up against it. 
Now rolling away. Just settle down, Wood. That's it for the spear. Now Don Richmond comes out. Not only does he have six marks in a row, but the last two have been striked. Had three pins standing, the one, three, and six. The six toppled into the three. The three toppled back and missed the one. That, that close to a thousand dollar bonus. To make it eight in a row, let's see. He has the one and two and ten and a lot of wood. Is it? He did. He has eight marks in a row. Phil Clough working on a spear, and he fires and gets eight, leaving the five and the eight. I know you're already wondering, very quickly, Ed Zernike has the highest score we've ever had for a single string 197. Piece of wood obviously is the reason that <coughs> for those of you who are our blind viewers that was what the delay was and now Phil just hit that piece of wood and did not make the spare as he had I told you the five and the eight to work on. Now they go, for, but it's just for a 10. Bill winds up with the seven, 10 split. There are Four pieces of wood, one is up against the seven, then there's a cluster of three in the middle. Got the seven, but could not go over there and get the 10. He just, uh, that one basically just stuck to his fingers and, and stayed. All right, Don Richmond has eight marks in a row. Now he is well on his way to nine because he got another nine pin drop and he's got that five pin to pick up. Did not get it. At a single pin, a piece of wood beside it. Didn't get it. One seventy-three he has now. He on uh, Don Riley has pointed out on the fourth of August this year. He, Don Richmond hit a one eighty-one. Let's see if he can better that. He's at one seventy-three right now. All right. 
He's at 180 right now, and he has three pins standing. They are the 5, 9, and 10. That ties it. 181. He did it, 182. A 182, which tops his uh, 181 of uh, the 4th of uh, August by one. Bill Clough has himself a strike. Missed the head pin on that one and got a thin hit. Just, uh, just three, there are seven pins still standing. Can he get them? All but two. Six and nine are the two pins that are still there and he gets one of them. Four or one nineteen. And another $50 in bonus money to Don Richmond for winning the middle string. And after two, he leads 299 to 243. Leading off in the third string. One, nine, and ten with wood behind it. It's a nine. One, three, eight, and ten. Pull on the head pin, and that's all he got. It's a nine. In case you're curious, the 182 for Don Richmond is the seventh highest single string that we've had. 197, Ed Zernike is the top. Dick O'Connell at a 194. Jim Barber and Dan Lasco had 191s. Pete Ionuzo a 190. Thin hit to the right side for Don this time. Uh, Wally Bozinski had a 189. Jim Kelly and Tom Olsta 186. And Don Richmond, Tom Senemy, and Phil Spintig have 182s. And of course, uh, uh, we already told you that Don Richmond also had a 181, as did Tom Olsta. We still haven't had the magic 200. Eight pins still standing. It's a 10. In addition, of course, to the bonus money for marks in a row, there is the extra $100 for going over 400 and obviously starting out the third string with 299 already on the board, Don Richmond has an excellent chance to do what he has done 
this particular streak that he's been on, he's done three previous times with a 417, 419, and a 410. They were falling pretty well for Phil Clough for a while in that first string. Uh, he wound up with a 124. But then he was pinning very well in the second string. He just was not able to uh, get the marks. I mean, he had a 10, a spare, a 10, 10, 10, spare, 10, 9, strike 9. So in only two boxes did he miss by one pin of getting them all, in one pin in each of those boxes. Now, he's uh, not getting quite the same action. That's a five box. And I'm sure that bowling alongside someone who was as hot as Don Richmond was in that streak of eight consecutive marks in that second string, that was really something. Bear leave. Another big nine drop. Ralph Stewart wants to call time because one piece of wood, which will not be in play anyway, it's over to the left side, has come forward and is this side of the Deadwood line and obviously has to be removed. There is another now that's right in front of the six pin, which is what he needs right now in order to make his spare. And he did. the head pin this time got five left four horsemen left side and nine pin no wood to help tough shot to convert and that's why you can get the four horsemen but when you make that pocket hit the one three the one goes one way the, excuse me one two the one goes one way it's, it works on either side as you know when it, as you come in and the piece of wood, uh, rather the standing wood in back does not go down. The, the pin in back doesn't go down because it gets a piece of felled wood on either side of it. Bill Clough. Is it going to topple? No, that four pin looked for sure it was going to go down, but it's staying up. And he also has the 10. Wood around both. Oh, what a great try. He kicked a piece of that wood and the pin over towards the 10, but didn't get it. strike and he applauds himself rather sarcastically now Don Richmond Don has the one three seven and eight Didn't quite go. It's a 10. As Don made his eight in a row, there were thoughts of the only two 
who have gone all the way. One of them, of course, was Rosario Lechiara. He had 10 marks in a row. And uh, Ed Zernike had 11. Obviously, he had a mark, a spare in the 10th, and then he struck with his bonus ball. And, of course, uh, had it been a strike in that last one, and then he rolled another strike and then another, then he would have had 12 marks in a row, just as, of course, a bowler who, in 10-pin bowling, gets a 300 game. He gets it by rolling 12 consecutive strikes. Clough working on a strike. First bonus ball gets him eight. Two and seven. That's what he's looking at. And he made it. Big Phil and a great chance right now. Only the seven pin to pick up wood in front of it. And it would appear that he has. Oh, yes, it finally did topple. But he actually missed it badly, nudged a piece of wood. And it finally did fall for another $50 in bonus money. Now Don Richmond, who after eight consecutive marks in the middle string has had only one so far in the first six boxes here in the third. One, two, four, that's what he's looking at. And they're gone. He wants to put up a big number here, obviously. New season for a true value championship. He gets seven more and he leaves one, three, ten. Wood rolling around in the back. Here he goes. He got one, three, but he didn't get ten. It's a 10. That puts him at 91. And uh, so he's right now at 390 with two boxes to go. Phil Clough has three marks in a row. And he's going to have, it would appear, four marks in a row because the only pin standing right now is the seven with wood in front of it and Ralph calls time because there's another piece of wood that's right now rolling back rolling back it's behind the deadwood line now and it's going to go into the gutter so for another mark yes and Phil Clough now has four marks in a row He has $150 in bonus money, 50 for winning the first string, and 100 right here. Oh, my, thin hit. Looked like it was going to be a good one, right in on the 1-3 pocket. Three, four, five, seven, eight, and 10. Now he still has four pins there, three gathered together, four, seven, and eight. It's an eight box, and he winds up with a 123. Now let's see whether uh, we 
he obviously is going to get over 400, but how much? He's at 390. There's a break. Now he has a chance to mark. He's looking right now at 47. Just as he was about to deliver, the piece of wood moved. And somebody off to the left hollered Bach. There you see the two pins that he's working on. Will he get them? Yes, he did. A hundred, a hundred and one, which of course puts him at right now, 401. Four hundred, four hundred, four hundred, four hundred, excuse me. And now he has nine more and a single pin, the five. This could be big. This could be big towards the score. He's got it. Yes. one there and said he got three. And so the final total for Don Richmond is 422 to Phil Clough's 366. And we're looking at 788 as the total of both bowlers combined, which means, of course, that if I have a card that's anywhere between 778 and 798 that person would win the $100 otherwise we will uh, add $50 and keep doing that till somebody does win and uh, as you already know when I draw that card even if it's nowhere near that total that person will be rewarded with several prizes what are they today Phil Stetson Cologne the great masculine sets easy to wear hard to resist your local retailer has details of Stetson's wheel away sweepstakes Stetson fits and solder seal gunk Heavy-duty puncture seal. Provides security in a can. Seals and inflates all types of tires. Keep a can of solder seal gunk puncture seal in your trunk. And an Ames folding camper shovel. Strong enough for any digging chore, yet small enough to fit in a backpack or tote bag. The steel blade locks in three separate positions for digging, scraping, or chipping. Nice going, Phil. That was a great impersonation of Frank of Rouge. <laughs> okay, let's see what... What we can get here now. 788 is what we're looking for. Uh, this one comes from Yarmouth Port, Shaker House Road, William M. Sage, and his guess is 743. Okay, so we add another 50. Do you think you could use another 600? <laughs> High low jackpot. Okay, Phil. Hey, and that goes now to 625. Come on over here, Phil. Phil, uh, $350 plus $175 in bonus money. I don't know. The last time uh, you were in here, uh, somebody, Steve Reno, threw a 433 at you, and today Donnie does a, a 422. Not much he could do about yeah, that. Yeah, I seem to uh, bring out the best in the world. Oh, okay, and, you're, uh, and you'll be getting your trophy from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. Come back and see us again, will you? Donnie, yeah. uh, let's see. With all of the money that you have won today, which is uh, $475 plus $700, that figures out to about six thousand four hundred and some odd dollars in the six weeks or so that you've been on. How about wow, that? Wow, huh? that's all right. <laughs> Going to send him to college with that, right? I'd, yeah. <laughs> you know that the four twenty-two would have gotten you into uh, last time, right? You know, yeah. you uh, Well, now maybe somebody will shoot for that, but yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's nice to have the number up on the board yeah. anyway. Okay, you can put him through college with some of your money, and I don't know who your opponent's going to be next week. The rollout hasn't been held. I'm going to be here, you'll be here, and he'll be here. You'll be here too, will you? Bye-bye, everybody.